Someone here knows a few atheists who have uh, suffered terribly in terms of either um, lost a, a brother or sister as a as a child, um, the a tragedy to a, a best friend as they were playing in the in the front yard, was shot, or. Um, Someone was raped by an older brother and Christians didn't help the family mm -hmm. in their poverty. How do we process things like this? How do we deal with those who've rejected because of some seeming yeah. injustice? injustice? Um, again, really profound question. I, I think one of the things that I think we don't do well as a church is actually express outrage at, and sorrow at horrific things happening as if we're helping God by not doing that. As if somehow God needs, you know, protection from, from those things. Actually, I think the starting point, point is to be a person who is outraged by injustice, rape, violence, the shooting of someone dead, that we, that that offends us as Christians because this is a violation of how the world should be um, and that, that we of all people ought to, our hearts ought to, to be enraged and, and deeply sad by, by those things. So that I think would be the first thing I would say, and I can tell you, we, um, my husband and I have worked a lot with um, victims of extreme um, sexual abuse and other kinds of violence, um, worked with people who've had family members murdered, etc. And a loving gift that you can give that kind of person is your outrage at what they've suffered mm -hmm. and your concern and compassion for them an acknowledgement that what has happened is horrific. Um, so I'd begin by saying that. I think the second thing I would say is where the church has, um, you know, not either spoken up or acted to prevent or um, bring justice to perpetrators of particularly sexual violence. Unfortunately, that is extremely common. The church has often colluded with abusers or, you know, hidden things. Um, and I think we need to acknowledge that and say, um, this has happened and it's wrong. My um, dear friend, a great um, sociologist and Christian speaker in Britain, a woman called um, Elaine Storkey, who worked a lot with John Stott, actually, she um, said famously, the church recruits from the human race, and so I expect the church to disappoint me. Mm. Um, and <laughs> that doesn't mean Jesus is going to disappoint me, but um, to say something like that, I think, can be an acknowledgement of the church's failings, and that's really, really important. Um, I also think that we can live in a way that um, loves justice and mercy. And so um, we can be people of the light in this dark world. Um, and that may take different forms for different ones of us, but I definitely want to be a woman who is working against the violation of other women in this world. Um, and so I think our actions can also speak to this kind of question. I think the fourth thing I would say is that um, I would encourage atheists and others who've turned away from God because of this kind of suffering um, to consider that the God of the Bible, at least, is big enough to deal with the anger and disappointment of human beings even questioning his existence and to have that in his book about him. That's really unusual. You don't find that in Islam and you don't find that anywhere else. I mean, he, the Hebrew literature of the Bible is amazing in giving voice to um, the kinds of things that are given voice to in the Old Testament. 
Um, and I guess to give people space to not pressure them or, or try and dominate them in any way into um, accepting our, our point of view, but perhaps to subtly and, and slowly at the right time in the course of relationship begin to ask questions around um, how you reconcile an atheistic worldview with moral outrage. How do you um, reconcile an atheistic worldview with this intrinsic sense of the value of life? And might that actually not be a bigger story? Begin with questions to help someone consider another way of, of, of looking at it.